Greetings, beloved, and welcome to our resurrection service. Amen. The, the service that we remember the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We take time off to remember it. Someone say remember it. But don't only be gonna remember it, we want to understand a little bit, a little bit more of the resurrection. Because the Lord is speaking to me. And your Archbishop exhorted you just now very well. But I want to show you something in the Bible that God drew my attention to. And so if you will be kind enough to turn with me, please, in your Bible, to the book of uh, Romans, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. And, and the, for your benefit, for your benefit. Let's read Romans chapter 4, because I know you're very busy, most of you are not very busy. I don't have the time to read the Bible. So, could we just read a little bit of Romans chapter 4, we read from verse 1. Some of you should say thank you, thank you, thank you, because I didn't read for a long time. Okay, good. We read from verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham, our father, has pertaining to the flesh, had found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath will of the glory, but not before God. For what said the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of death. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. No, 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 no. Please just stop here a little bit. Let's just stop here a little bit because this is deep. It's not what we talk about, but we can't run this over. You understand? You just stop and pay attention. David, the Bible says, even as David, for it's about five, said, but to him that worketh not, but believe it on him that justified the ungodly, his faith is come to righteousness. Who justifies the ungodly? Jesus, right? All right. I mean, we believe on him, the Bible says, our faith is come to his righteousness. So because of that, God called you righteous. Yes, sir. Even as David described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness to the world. Now, this, is, this thing has been troubling from the time the, the message, the gospel started, was started to, uh, to be preached. And this is the gospel, I'm not telling you, but the gospel to the Gentiles, that Paul had. They refer to this as the gospel of grace. Yeah. From the time this gospel started to be preached, there was trouble. Because the scripture says, whom God imputed righteousness without works. It is, it, it's a provoking thing to a lot of people. Especially to the old persons who have put away this and put away that and put away and stop this and stop that and stop that. Thinking they would have gotten righteous. Now here are these people who they let him go through what they made the sacrifices they made and they're having a party. The old church, as you know, is provoked. They're angry. Because as far as they're concerned, you gotta understand there was a time they wouldn't watch television. You couldn't go to the movie. You couldn't wear jewelry. You couldn't wear sleeveless. You couldn't wear braided hair. I knew a girl, every time she washed her hair, she'd cry because she could not straighten it out and make it easy, make it manageable. Because religion says you can't do that. You couldn't wear jeans. You couldn't wear makeup. That'll be like a plain jean. So now, I remember when I was in Nigeria and I showed somebody a photograph of my wife then. And they said, is she safe? I said, yes. With all the makeup on? 
You see that? Now, words, if the oil that you have, anything to drink, oil and water and juice, or soup, anything that had any spirit in it, you are destined for help. So now, when there are forces who don't talk about if you've been to a party, you can't be saved anymore. Because it, the devil's, the, the dance floor is the devil's trap door. Yeah. So now when you tell the people you're just saved by grace, because remember, the message all the years was you are saved because you believe that they teach that God sent his son into the world and whosoever believe it in him, whosoever behave it right, shall be saved. That's the message. That is the message of Christian Dung, Emerson Dung, that was preached all the time. The Bible didn't say that. I was telling some people yesterday, I said, you know, what the church told us is not what the Bible says. Let me say it again, I've said it very often. Christianity was used by the white man to control the slaves and the people in the colonies. They used Christianity. And because they call themselves Christian and they use the book, they did not read the book. They held the book under their arms and they preached through a magazine. Most, some sales, most people say, you know, I was going to Susu and I saw this and I, had, I got my message. When well, I have to go 20 miles in the head of my sin, the, the, the word God said. And because the slaves could not read, they were even justified slavery from the Bible. They justified it. Now, I was in that place at one time where I felt the white man wrote the book. And so I, I, I got rebellious against everything the Bible would look, even look at the Bible. Then one day I said to myself, oh, you can't be the Spirit of God, I said, you better read the book. And so I read the book. I would read everything, I would read everything. I mean, I read Roots, I read the, whatever book I, I read. So I decided I'm going to read the book. When I read the book, I realized, ain't no white man so bright to write this thing. Yeah. Nobody is so bright to write this book. The brilliance in this book is too much. Nobody is so bright. And then I discovered when I read the book, what they were telling us is not what the book said. Wow. <laughs> yes. I can read. Amen. So when you see a slave who could read was a dangerous slave. Yes. Slavery was abolished, it was passed, so people couldn't even read it, they didn't know. A slave who can read is a dangerous slave. As a matter of fact, they had a saying, if you want to hide something from a nigger, hide it in the book. Because niggas don't read. But I ain't a nigger. Because I can read and I do read. So if you put it in the book, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find exactly where it is. And then they taught me the English language and they put the book in the English language. And they taught me how to use a dictionary. So if I see a word I don't understand, I can go to the dictionary and see the definition for it. And when I checked some words and the definition they gave, I realized, okay, then what they're telling us is not true. You understand? That's why I preach you for the book. So you can always know the Bible said, the word of God said. So the Bible says that the church had a problem with these people who, who are claiming justification, who are claiming righteousness. <laughs> Excuse me. And they didn't do any works to get it. Remember the, the, the prodigal son, the one at home? Yes. Then the other one came home. And his father said, come into the party. He said, no. You see, look how I was here. I told my son, I work hard. You never throw a party for me. Now this vagabond come home, you have a party for me. You understand? So some people are getting enjoying this party. 
When we testify, have you ever heard somebody testify that you change yourself? How God, how God doing this with the, the kind of people? You know some people enjoy in the journey say, them kind of people. Look, and I'm living right, 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 and I'm not getting anything. It was just beginning by faith. Glory to God. Not by words. So David said, David said, I'm seeing down the road something that I don't understand. A man to whom God imputed righteousness without words. In other words, God called this man righteous and he didn't do anything to get him. And then he think it's finished up there. He said, saying, blessed are days the day whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. What? According to the Lord of David, you will have to die for your sin. Yes. Sins forgiven? Yes. Sins will not forgive one of the Lord. So they would say, I'm seeing something I don't understand. He couldn't understand it. Whose sins are forgiven and their iniquities are covered? Glory to God. My God. Tell somebody, this is something you do, something you do, something you do. And David said, listen, listen, blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not repeat sin. They say, I'm seeing something now for that I don't understand. I'm seeing somebody or a group of people to whom the Lord will not impute sin. In other words, the Lord will not call them sinners. Are you hearing me? Let me, let me, put, it, let me put it this way. It's not really rough, but then imagine the child running and down somebody's prized possession. You go to the parent company, the parent says, Why did you put it there? <laughs> you, you rob me. I want some side of So hold on, you tell my, my child wrong to you. They didn't call the doctor, they said, Why did you put it there? They felt the brick and break my car and screw. Why did you park your car there? In the line of the brick. <laughs> you know, you don't understand God, you know. You, you don't understand God yet, you know. That's what God did with you, you know. Yes, yes, you're free from me. George Jones is a sinner and we decree that George Jones should die why is it in God carrying all this sentence because you know why because you're ignorant you didn't read the Bible you will read it there is a man that God who will take no account of anything he did now please don't remind the people that people will take account but you have to work with God are you hearing me? Yeah. Okay, it's a little strong. It's strong for your brother. It's getting quiet. We don't. Come, verse 9. Comment this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet been uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe. Though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. Don't make sense of it. When 
God introduced circumcision. God was about to kill a man is said. The time is not so himself. You don't know the story. You know the story, Archbishop? Who's son? Moses. 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 Because his son was not so himself. Yeah. The wife wanted to run quickly, yeah. take a knife and cut out the foreskin of her son. Yeah. To save him. God was about to kill Moses because somebody was uncircumcised was in his presence. So I want you to I want you to get a picture of how serious circumcision was. And here the Bible says, Abraham received was called righteous when he was uncircumcised. That's right. So to be uncircumcised was to, like, to be in a sinful state. But well, because Abraham believed God, God said you're righteous. Lord of mercy, are you hearing this? So you may be in a state that you are not going to like about yourself. But because you believe God, God says you're righteous. This is powerful. That's the word. It was improved when it was in uncircumcision. Go on, my dear, please. And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, father, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath. Mm. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Really? Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end, the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that which only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations, before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone, that it, was, that it was imputed to him, but for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Who was delivered oh, for our yeah. offenses and was raised again for our justification? There was somebody who said, Leave the cross. Leave the cross. Leave the cross. Leave the cross. And look for the throne. Tell somebody say, forget about the cross. Forget about the cross. Think about the throne. Think about the throne. No, no, why am I telling you something? Forget about the cross. Well, you can forget about Calvary. Yeah, yeah. Forget about Calvary. The Bible says he was delivered for offenses. He was delivered up. Now the church was stuck on the cross. We got stuck. We got stuck on the cross. You might have a symbol of the cross here. I'm changing. 
the Lord told me, forget the cross. Why you can't forget the cross? Let me show you why you forget the cross. The cross speaks of what? What it paid for your offenses. That's what it tells God to go. Just go back right a little bit before going to work today. Go back a little bit in the same scripture we just read and see what David saw. Yes. Yes, please read 6 from 6. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Stop. You know what we, you know we constantly do? Try to honor to those things. Big it up. More remember them. God, the Bible said God will all remember them. Every time you're at the cross, you're remembering sin. I like what our bishop said, he's not a sinner saved by grace. You see, we shouldn't even make those statements. Because what we do, we keep remembering. We remember the sin. We remember this. Listen, stop. They are covered. Amen. You go like a dog that covered the bone was gone and try to dig it back up. Don't dig up, dig up anything. I know there was a group, of, uh, a group of persons who were in a, in a deliverance ministry. And when people go to them, they just have to pick up all the past. Yeah. Tell them who they slept with, who they did this, who they did that. Yeah. When people names that they put on the book. Yeah. When God. <laughs> And they ask you, is that all? Try to remember Holy Ghost, make them remember. What Holy Ghost make you remember? Then God covered the sin. Yeah. And you, they say, to get deliverance, true deliverance, you have to remember. That's the devil. Yes. God, the Bible says, who sins are what? Covered. I know, you know, in the old days we had outside latrines, and sometimes the big latrine it gets a little, it gets full, and they would put cut bush and all the bushes and so and put it in there and then throw dirt and try and fill it back up. Well, imagine you go in there to dig up there to see what was inside. You understand? So every time you think of the sin and the Calvary, how do you think it's sin? My Bible tells me something that really got my attention. It says, He was delivered for our sin, for offenses, which was covered. But He was raised for our justification. Now, though there are those who say, I don't want the resurrection. So whether Christ rose or not is not important. Excuse me. Paul said, if he wasn't raised from death, then we are all men most miserable. Why? Because we are still in our sin. If he wasn't raised from the dead, then he can't be counted as a sacrifice for sin. Because that means his body suffered corruption. And he was not holy enough to be a sacrifice for sin. You see, the land, the land that was sacrificed had to be without spot and blemish. Physically or symbolically, but the person that has to be sacrificed had to have no spot or blemish. If any sin was found in Jesus, he could not raise from the dead. He could not be raised. Because he could not be a sacrifice for sin. The sin was upon him, it was not in him. Yes, you didn't hear me. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. So I said the sin was upon him. It was not in him. It was not in him. As a person, I find no fault in this man. In him is what yes. yes. It was upon him. He was carrying it. But it was not in him. Are you hearing me? So he had to get up for justification. Now what does this mean? This word justification is a legal term. It's a legal term. Let me give you an example. Let's say 
Your heart is strong alibi, you have an alibi. Good. Let, let's say somebody accuses you of stealing something. I turn to the time. And then the person is arrested and they're held. And somebody comes up and says, hey, at that time, a credible witness said, that person was with me. Guess what? The person who was accused is now justified. In other words, the person is declared righteous. The person is declared all right. Are you hearing this? Why Christ has to rise for a justification? Here the Bible says about Jesus. When he raised us, he raised us together with him. Yes, sir. And he caused us to sit together with him. Yes, sir. Beloved, if he, didn't, if he wasn't raised, and somebody find you there, have you ever been anywhere with somebody who, who got you in? And then they have to go to the bathroom or something. <laughs> and people looking at you. And somebody has the bonus to come over and say, excuse me, what are you doing here? <laughs> and you can't answer because you don't you and all don't know what you're doing there. <laughs> but then you see the person walking, coming back, yes. and they say, He's with me. Yeah. <laughs> are you? Oh, he's with me. And say, oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. But let me tell you something. So when you walk into the throne room and some angel will come and say, what are you doing here? Do you say he's with me? Amen. That's what justification is. Yes, oh, oh, he's with me. Yes, he's all right. Who wants to say? Yes. He's all right. She, she's all right. Yes. She believes in me. That's all right. You see, because if he wasn't raised from the dead, nobody could testify that you are all right. Amen. Yeah. How to testify that? So Christ was raised for justification. Glory to God. The Bible said we should be by the throne. The Bible said we should be coming boldly before the throne of grace. Yes, sir. Not a cross. The throne of glory. That's the word. That's the word. And he's sitting there justifying our coming. Hallelujah. I can come in because he's there. Yes. Glory to God in the I hear I, I, by what authority approaches you this place? I can hear you go By what authority? Did you say by my authority? Yes. But by what authority are you demanding the ceiling? By my authority. Amen. So when you say, hey, no, 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 I'm not receiving no sickness. You don't receive sickness, but you're sin. Well, why, why are you saying you can't receive sickness? You say by man of God. Hallelujah. But I'm saying he justifies. He justifies us. Yes. In other words, he gives you a reason to say, I have to be healthy. Yes. Yes. I have Amen. to be whole. Yes, sir. How he justifies it? As long as you believe him and believe in him, guess what? You say God be whole, then you God be whole. Yeah. Hallelujah. He is a justifier. Yes. He was raised. If God didn't raise Jesus back up. And as I said, this they saying he was our God would be dark. Mm. Are you heard it? Yes. Yes. You, uh, how, uh, how else? Who else can justify you? There's no other man in heaven. Nobody, nobody could justify. How else can you go to the throne of grace? How else can you go to the throne of God? How else can you sit there comfortably? Because somebody here is saying, he's with me. Hallelujah. I want you to understand what God is saying. I'm going to develop this, but let me tell you what God said. God said, stop thinking about cross. Start thinking about throne. Yes. Yeah, you heard it? You see, we think about the cross. And the cross. You see, yeah. cross always reminds you of your sin, your imperfection. Think about the throne. Yeah. That you're justified. Yeah. 
God sees you just like Jesus. Hallelujah. When we say he's with me, he says like me. And that's why he was raised up. So, so we need to understand today, the day when he was raised is a special day. Because he was raised for our justification. You know how many persons could have lost their lives if there was not somebody there to stand up and say, no. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm standing here to yes, say that that is not so old this person. Yes, I'm standing here. No, I'm standing here to say. Yes, yes. On my word, that's a good person. Jesus oh, yes, yes. Oh, on my word, that's a father, that's a good person. Hallelujah. That's a good person. Hallelujah. But, but the future of your brethren has a problem, you know, because Amen. he didn't die, you know, he's still here. He's going to choose you all the time. Yes. And the only reason he can't execute judgment is because the justifier said, no, she's like me. She's with me. She's in me. When you place your faith in Jesus Hallelujah. Christ, God sees you in him. Amen. Yes, you see the you raise us to get together with him, right? Yes, sir. Now, you can't be a boy because you're a boy. You still here? Amen. Look at the funny thing. Look at the funny thing. Now, your body might do some foolish, foolishness. Mm -hmm. So, when the enemy starts pointing at your body, just pointing next to his head. Look at me. 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 I raised him up together with me. His body didn't get in memory yet, but listen. Uh, Her body didn't get in memory yet, but he's me. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. I know of times, you know, when I hear stories, some soldier might get drunk you know, or something. Let's face some of them locations and the police might have to arrest them around and that. And the captain will come in and say, you are a man. Yeah. <laughs> Remember Rambo? Yes. <laughs> man, he, he's one man. And how many times have you seen a movie where they hold somebody yes. for some kind of thing? And then somebody come in and say, um, I come to take him up, take him yes. up. Yeah. And they say, No, you can't take him up. Say, take this car. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 I remember a time I went up to pick somebody over the airport. I was really profusely. And so I saw it and I saw, what's it called? It was um, Crystal. The big young Crystal. So I saw it and then I saw her. I told the door, I said, I'm going to circle around. Just come, run out when I come. So, so. I circled and he tried to run out to jump in the A policeman was standing across the road. Came to me and said, Go to the station. Well, I know there's a no stopping. I said, Sir, because of the I don't care, go to the station. So I had to drive to the station of post this. Sat on the bench. And I made a call. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I made a call. Yeah, nice, nice. And I said, put him on. <laughs> I said, um, somebody let to speak to you, sir. The next two words is come over and say, go on your way. <laughs> Are you, you hear me? Yes, are you, are you, are you need, are you, yes. The enemy could hold you. Yes. He could hold you. Yes. But I tell you when Jesus, when you get called from Jesus. Yes. Yes. Are you hearing me? So? Yes. In other words, you say you have a right. But if you don't know, 
You say you know people. You got no people that you can justify you. Now people just go to no forces to come make a call. But you have Jesus with them. And when you say, Jesus, he said, he's going to come. So when you call him, he talk to people, you know? Yes, sir. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. Hallelujah. When he said, Jesus, he, he talks to people. Yes. Yes. He's called Satan's headquarters. And say, you got one of mine there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not the one who hold you. Yeah. Say, you got one of mine there. <laughs> but he violated this and he violated this. You got one of mine. Are you heard? Yes. He was raised for justification. Yes, Who we need to be living as, as the justified? Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. Not a sinner saved by grace. Right. We should all be living as the justified. I'm yes. justified. Amen. Let me tell you what this we just it means you're just like Jesus. Yes. What are you? You just said Jesus. I'm just like Jesus. By faith, I'm just like Jesus. Yes. I believe in him. So I'm just like him. I'm just like Jesus. Glory to God. But you did so, you did so, and you me. What did he do? When he did all those things to him. What did he do? That he justified me. He told me that I'm all right. I'll tell you something. Until you develop the consciousness that you're justified, you will live as if you're not justified. You'll operate like if you're not justified. You have to place faith your faith in Jesus Christ allows you to live as a justified. To live as somebody who has got a right. Christ justified me. I've got a right, I've got privilege. You see, that, that consciousness changes your mind. I remember, let me give an example. And some of you may have heard it before. I want my wife and I come home to Pink, Florida. And she has all this luggage, four suitcases, personal carrier. Yes. The airline she can only travel to. Yes. Her carry on has more than 70 pounds. How oh, I know I had to carry it on. <laughs> and I'm angry because I'm saying to myself, I'm an intelligent person. Why would I submit myself to this when people said 70 pounds in a suitcase? Each suitcase, I can't tell how many pounds you are. They had a big inside. <laughs> she was determined to bring out the half of the problem. And she said to me, she said, I have favor. <laughs> no, I got. No, I preach favor. <laughs> so she told me, I have favor. I'm in Zoom Zoom, I don't know what to say. Because she said I failed. But let me tell you. So we were about to check in. And the lady come, we travel in America in the night. And the lady come and said, Open my passport. So, oh, you are cancer. I said, yes. She said, I'm a cancer too. I said, nice people. She said, wonderful people. She checked in all six suitcases. <laughs> and the, 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 the and luggage that they, she didn't put on the skate, she tagged it. So my wife is strutting. <laughs> I told her I have favor. <laughs> but when we flying to Trinidad and connected to that to, to, to the time was Caribbean Airlines. It was Caribbean Airlines, it was BB. Connecting to BB. And we were sitting in the lounge waiting. And the guy comes. Um, no, 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 no. You don't want to know. You have to pay for some luggage, excess luggage. I got a boy. I know I was 
Is that a good thing? <laughs> so I'm, I, I'm, get, I already, I'm, I'm already angry. And he said, uh, I said, how much? He said, I'll come back and tell you more. So I'm so angry, I'm not talking. <laughs> and then the guy walked back in and said, it's all right, you don't have to You know why that happened? Because my wife played faith, placed faith in the word that she has faith. Yes. Yes. When you place faith that you are justified before oh, God, exactly. you will not pray different. Yes. You see how the time, you see, listen how we pray. Oh dear heavenly mother, loving merciful Father, I come to thee, Lord. You know why you pray that prayer? Because you're coming as a sinner. You're not coming as you justify. The Bible says, "Let's come boldly before the throne of grace." You come boldly before the throne of grace. No, no, no. Candy was smart. Why would Candy want Candy? Because the daddy want the daddy pieces of the daddy pieces of the. She didn't come to the throne. No, her mother was growing so growing so. You have to say what you want. I don't know when people get older, they get the loans and things like that. But when it's small, it's they come straight to the point. In the corner, daddy says, so, 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 so. so all people have to come and go around, and you know, they go around three, four times, then they can say, when you justify, are you here? Yes. Shine went into my refrigerator and took off whatever he wanted, because he said, my father, my father's home. When you justify you be in the behavior of that. You be in the operator and say, eh, my dad is home. Thank you, Lord. Are you hearing me so much? Yes, sir. When you justify you know that your father will not even be angry with you. Yeah. Because you're justified. It will change your mindset. When your mindset changes, you begin to operate differently. Yes. Because you begin to operate like Jesus. You have a justifiable right. Yes. Like you have the right yes. to do X. You have the right to rebuke a disease. You have the right to walk yes. in victory. Amen. You have the right to walk in prosperity. Yes. You have the right to walk in hell. Yes. You have a right. Amen. It's not just privilege, it's your right. One. Why? Because it justified you. Yes. Show my wife was you say it's my right to fix excess load, <laughs> even though it says 70 pounds. <laughs> Came in four, two suitcase, four suitcases, six in all, and two she has four. Why? Because she, it's not that, that there was favor, she placed faith in faith. Yeah. You have to place your faith in justification. Yeah. Now, we have faith is in the cross. We have faith that. Let me see this. You want to say, let me see. You know why we like the cross? Because we think that every time we sin, we don't think we have to take it to the cross. Let me explain something to you what you may not know. Let me explain. Can I explain something to you? Yes. When Christ died on Calvary's cross, he died for sin that you didn't think of yet. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Things that you didn't think of yet, he paid for them. Yes. Things that you will do when you meet. 18. Yeah. You already paid for them. Yeah. So when you come to the cross, ask it, come to the altar, you don't have to come and, and repent and ask God to forgive them. He don't know what you're talking about. Because those things were covered. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He saved you. He foreknew you. Predestinated you. Yeah. And the pay for everything that you will ever do. Praise God. Now, people don't know that. They're living in the house every Sunday. Yeah. Hollering and screaming, asking God to forgive them. And God will say, what are you doing here? What are you doing at the cross? You need to be sitting on the throne. Hallelujah. The Lord, my life is not right. Are you stupid? Can you read that my son died to make you right? Yeah. Why don't you believe it? Because the preacher didn't it. 
I said, I don't believe it. The preacher didn't preach it. The preacher told him how to put his life right. And he got all the right. He tried to fix his own. You see, it's a funny form of control. Because you feel that the preacher got to fix me right. I have to get my life right. Christ justified me. Glory to God. What you should watch it, we must be thinking about is the, is the throne. Keep your minds on the throne. Keep your minds on the throne. We only think of the cross because we want to remember when we died for my sin. I know what a sinner like me. I mean, you know, we go in no memory lane. I'm remembering all the things I did and all what I did. Listen to me. I need to say a wrong word over the Jedi. We fast in things with nails, nails and screws. But mm -hmm. nail loads, I will use nails. Mm. Yes, sir. It was just. Mm -hmm. No sin. Thing. Let me explain something to you. Dami. There's no sin that you can incur. That's right. Don't worry with joking people telling you foolishness. They don't know, they're ignorant, they don't read the Bible. Christ paid for it. Amen. Some of you carrying some sicknesses and disease because you think this is the deserve to have it. Stop your nonsense. Christ paid for that a long time. Ago. As long as you be living as a justified person. Yes. Just like Jesus. You're supposed to be just like him. You have a right to walk in hell. We could never see our right to be healthy. It's your right. You know, when I look at the word of God, some of the things we go thanking God for, God said, you think you understand it? It's like when I I travel for his class and they come and take my coat. Before his time is over, I, I think you know. Say, Thank you so much. They have a locker there for my coaches. Yes, so when I understood it, I went in. I took my coat off and had it on the seat in front of me. Yes. And without saying one word, it was just going to take that coat and hand it off. Yes. We were in a hotel in Jamaica, and so we got up and. My wife trying to clean the so bed, and the lady, the maid came in. Oh, she made up the bed. The maid came and said, please don't do that. Don't make up no bed. That's my job. You see, the way you don't know, you don't mean your task that you should be doing. That's right. Because you don't know you're justified. Because, because I don't know you're justified. So you're living like, a, like an ordinary person. When you understand you're justified, he was raised for your justification. Yes, right. First of all, so the accused of the virgin can't have any chance with you. If he accuse you, ah, he's one man. He's one of others. When they hear the CIA, you're going to say, um, the person you're holding is one of ours. I want to move you out I said, and um, why do I take it? He came to us and said, this man was never here, right? He said, yes, so he was never here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, he said he was never here. Right? Some of them Hollywood got some, have some ideas and concepts. Yes. <laughs> you are never here. You know what just went to him? He said, what he gets is, uh, he was never here. He was never here. Hallelujah. Are you hearing this? Yes, sir. When you start to believe that you're justified, and stop living and thinking like a sinner saved by grace, is a, is a life right with Christ? How is your prayer life? 
That's what I'm going to stop you. Put a light. I live with him, I live with him. What's What's what That's That's when you understand, you're justified. Yes, you need to say, no, um, yeah. in the beginning of the year, we fast for 30 days to hear from the Lord. Oh, Why you move from near the Lord? Yeah. That you got to go fasting for 30 days to hear him. He walks with me. I'm praying God for this time. Hallelujah. He, he promised never to leave me or forsake me. He said, I'll with you forever. He always did. Yes, he said, no, I want to hear from you. What's wrong with you? When you understand justification, you begin to walk in a different realm. Could I, could I tell you something? God just says there are people not like you. They won't like you because you're just God. The royalty understands the royalty. Commoners will not get no more. What do you want to say? I think a tumor, a tap, what do you say? A kuna muktapa, a kuna matata, matana, or what do you The blind one didn't know he was who he was until he came to the understanding of who he was. That he was gay. You understand that? When you understand, you're justified. Yeah. You know, some of you can't handle this with the cross. Because the cross has become a symbol to us. Yes. God says, take by the throne. Yes. Leave your sin with the word buried. Christ buried all there. Amen. See why he didn't do We didn't think about already buried. That's why there's a man who God can take no comp. He can't take a comp if it was a comp for already. Amen. It's our company. He can't take a comp for it because it was a comp for already on Calvary. So David's all right. He can't take a comp for it. It was already a comp for. This was already a comp for. You can't put it back. Why well, didn't commit it yet? This is only yet on Calvary. He took into account oh, everything you already know. Yes, sir. So God, could I tell you something? People and you can take a comp of it. You because you don't know, and people because they don't know. God can't take a comp of it. Imagine you are a little bit and you're hiding from the creditor and you don't know that somebody paid off your debt. Yeah. And all you're hiding, even when they see you, they have you living, you can't even talk, you bend in your head. And they can send you out, they can tell you anything, talk to you like a child because you think you're dead, so then you have to do it. And then you discover one day, so I said, you know, because of God. Why you love this man to take the man? Oh, yeah. Why you want? I bought this money. I pay that money. Ah, ah. Yes, sir. You, you pay that since we, when? You don't know how I pay that money? I want to circle call me again. All right. Talk to me. Call me. Uh, I want you to call me. Yes. The boys used to push me and chuck me and take it because I'm dead. Now touch me. All right. As a matter of fact, because I know the debt is paid, and enough was paid, I put a good beat in me. Because somebody say your debt was paid. Leave Calvary. Debts were paid there. Go to the throne. The Bible said, come boldly before the throne of grace. That's what we need to be living in the throne room. Reigning with him. Don't think about it. You heard this? Remember somebody said, I'm justified. So Lord, thank you for justifying me. 
Amen. I pray to God that you can see the Lord. Amen. Be blessed. You can go to us on television on the on, um, Facebook Live. But you know, you know, I just feel like allowing, keep it on. Uh, we have some arts coming up and we enjoy some of the presentation. What? Put the camera here and record it. Say that again. Stop. 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 Okay. Stop. 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 Stop.